Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a quartic equation with four distinct roots. So this equation is fairly interesting because we have an extra variable, which is a parameter. For different values of a, you get different solutions for x. And when we say four distinct roots, we're talking about x, obviously. So this equation, do you want to use the quartic formula? I don't think so. Is there a discriminant for quartic equations? Something to think about. And uh, does that give us information about the number of distinct roots? That's another question. Okay, now, that's not what I'm going to look at. Obviously, that's going to complicate things, and I want to approach it from a different angle. And I hope you like it. With some parametric equations, such as this one, the equation is quartic, so solving a quartic would be horrible, you know, horrible experience probably. I want to approach it from an A perspective. Why? Here's the following. I can write this as a squared minus a minus 2x squared a plus x to the fourth plus x equals zero. Now, what's that supposed to mean? It means that even though this equation is quartic in x, it is quadratic in a. This is a common strategy that we use for solving some, you know, competition level or Olympiad level problems. So don't be surprised, like, who would think of that? If you dealt with these problems, you would think of these kinds of things. Okay, so now let's go ahead and arrange the coefficient of a here. I can write that as negative of 2x squared plus 1 times a, and then x to the fourth plus x is going to be a constant because a is the main variable, x is a constant. Okay, this is quadratic, so we can solve it using the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and solve it. So using the quadratic formula, we can write the a values as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. 4ac, since a is 1, I mean the coefficient of a squared. It's just going to be negative 4 times the constant term. And all of that divided by 2a, which is 2. Great. So that is the a value, but we need to simplify under the radical. So let's go ahead and take the discriminant. That's kind of easier. Uh, I think if we simplify that first, let's go ahead and um, simplify this expression. How do you simplify this? Well, you can square it. And then distribute. And then these two terms cancel out. And what do you end up with? A perfect square. Perfect. Okay, so this discriminant is a perfect square. That's good news. Obviously, this is not a coincidence. It's been arranged, right? Okay. Now, we have this discriminant. What am I going to do with that? Well, I can write it as 2x minus 1 quantity squared. Nice. So now, let's go ahead and replace the discriminant with what it is. I can write the a value as 2x squared plus 1 plus minus the square root of the delta. So... The square root of that is just going to be that expression without the square. So this is our expression. There we go. So we got the a values in terms of x. What is so good about it? We were trying to solve for x. We will. But first of all, we did this. Let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit. From here, I get two solutions. Start with the positive. Okay, this cancels out. And from here, we get a equals x squared plus x. Okay, let's keep that and then look at the other one. 2x squared plus 1 minus 2x plus 1. Don't forget to negate both values. And here, we don't cancel out anything, but we can divide by 2. It's going to be x squared minus x plus 1 when we divide by 2. Okay, so we got two a values, but that wasn't our goal. Our goal was to solve for x, so let's go ahead and switch roles now. Since a is equal to x squared plus x, then I can write this as x squared plus x minus a is equal to 0. Now we got a quadratic. And from the second one, we're also getting a quadratic. x squared minus x plus 1 minus a is equal to 0. So these equations obviously are multiplied together and they make our quartic. All right, great. So we get the following quartic then. Basically, by doing this, we factored our quartic equation. Isn't that nice? All right, so now we do want this equation, and if you don't believe that, you can go ahead and distribute, simplify, and you'll see that you get the original equation. Now, we do want this to have 
four distinct real solutions. Okay. Well, how can I get four distinct real solutions? Well, I do need to get two distinct solutions from here and two distinct solutions from here. And that's going to give me four distinct solutions. Of course, the solutions that we get from either side, they also have to be different. We also have to make sure that it works. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, each discriminant here. Uh, we do have two quadratics. Uh, let's call this delta 1. Delta 1 is going to be negative b. I mean, b squared minus 4ac. What am I talking about? Okay. b squared is going to be 1 uh, plus 4a. Obviously, we want that to be positive. So we have two roots. Delta 2 is going to be b squared, uh, which is 1, minus 4ac. And that's going to be minus 4 times uh, 1 minus a. And that can be written as 4a minus 3, and we also want that to be greater than 0. Now, the first thing tells me 4a must be greater than negative 1. This tells me 4a must be greater than 3. And we're going to be looking at the intersection because that both of them have to be satisfied. So this means 4a needs to be greater than 3, which means a needs to be greater than 3 fourths. All right? Great. So now, uh, will these two quadratic equations have a common root by any chance, right? So you can kind of look at that as well. So if you write the solutions uh, for the first one, for example, the solutions are going to be like this, negative b uh, plus minus the square root of the you know, discriminant divided by 2a. And from the second one, it's going to be also, uh, well, it's a positive one plus minus the square root of the delta, which is 4a minus 3 over 2. Now, here's one thing that happens. If uh, the discriminants are not 0, then they're not going to have a common root because these two values are going to be different. And you can easily check that. So that tells us that if a is equal to 3 fourths, then they have a common root. All right? OK. So this means that for, these, for this quart quartic equation to have, for distinct roots, a values must be greater than 3 fourths. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.